Hello, I'm Steve Troost, Michigan State University's campus planner with an infrastructure planning and facilities. The university facilities and land use plan effort is being co-chaired by myself and Ms. Barb Kranz, Assistant Provost for Institutional Planning and Space Management. This presentation summarizes the update provided to the Board of Trustees at their June retreat. The University Facilities and Land Use Plan provides a flexible framework to guide physical development in alignment with our academic research and outreach mission, as well as with established planning and budgeting protocols. The plan in and of itself does not mandate growth, rather it provides aspirational opportunities for assimilation of programmatic needs based on guiding principles. It helps us optimize the use of limited resources so that we, as stewards, are leveraging our facilities and land to their highest and best potential. It provides university leadership with another strategic tool to help make facilities and land use decisions with an intentional eye toward the future. Engagement with students, faculty, staff, alumni, and community neighbors has been a cornerstone of the process we began over one year ago. The university updates its campus plan on a five-year cycle, like municipalities across the state. This update comprehensively addresses facilities and land use on the East Lansing campus and statewide facilities through the counsel of an external consultant team led by Sasaki Associates, who are international specialists in campus planning and urban design. We are scheduling to finalize the plan's recommendations and seek formal BOT approval at the December 2023 public meeting. MSU operates important educational, research, and outreach facilities throughout the state. Land is one of our strategic resources. Disposition of land should be based on contributions to strategic priorities, impacts to unique cultural resources, and with acknowledgement that the university occupies and uses ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands seeded by indigenous communities. Strategic priorities are established through the colleges, ag bio research and extension using existing planning and budgeting protocols. Criteria to assess disposition of existing land holdings and acquisition of new should center on academic success, research potential, outreach opportunities, strategic partnerships and cultural resource stewardship. Within East Lansing, the campus plan covers over 5,200 acres of land holdings that accommodate 576 buildings totaling over 25 million gross square feet. The campus plan will strategically guide investment decisions, not only in terms of where development takes place to support programmatic needs, but also what existing physical areas to reinvest in, including facilities, infrastructure, open space, and natural areas. The campus plan takes a system-based approach to planning. This first diagram conceptually illustrates where we foresee the expansion of academic and research programs. By continuing to intentionally cluster academic and research facilities, shown in blue, we maximize programmatic synergies, utilize our land to its highest and best potential, provide efficient accessibility to these resources, and minimize costly extensions to supporting infrastructure. Strategic clustering supports proximity for class change, research collaboration, and overall personal well-being. The area shown in pink depicts where we foresee partnerships that advance our teaching, learning, research, and outreach mission. Ideally, partnerships should have programmatic alignment, support the translational aspect of our research, and or support student mentoring and success. For example, the 140-acre Spartan Village parcel offers 4.5 million gross square feet of potential development to advance partnerships in alignment with these supporting principles. Second, we showcase where we foresee student life and campus amenities. The plan concentrates development with a mix of uses, providing efficient access to academic resources and collaborative amenities that support the whole student, the whole person. Any growth for undergraduate housing should remain proximal to established residential neighborhoods. Third, the campus will be connected via an efficient transportation network that includes a suite of options for mobility. 
As part of the strategy, we preserve the pedestrian priority zone in the historic North Campus and extend it south of the Red Cedar River. By creating this as a pedestrian priority zone, we provide an inviting and comfortable environment currently characterized by surface parking lots and vehicular congestion. An efficient shuttle system will interconnect the academic districts and residential neighborhoods. Bike lanes will provide enhanced connectivity. Barrier-free accessibility is provided across campus. And vehicular parking is still conveniently located throughout the campus, but is positioned in such a way as to make the car less intrusive. Fourth, the plan protects and enhances the landscape spaces and natural areas that are a unique attribute to our campus. Baker Woodlot is extended eastward to further leverage its teaching and research potential. An enhanced riparian zone along the Red Cedar River will improve stormwater management and help us build a more climate resilient campus. The framework plan for lands north of Mount Hope Road provides over 20 million gross square feet of development opportunities. This is a long-term vision. While we cannot anticipate the pace of development or change, we must aspire for an optimal organizational strategy, a framework that we can additively work towards project by project over time. The plan's purpose is to provide a flexible framework with opportunities for assimilating change in response to evolving institutional needs. We need to think long while managing for today. The plan continues the notion of the campus in a park, where campus facilities exist within a rich ecological and open space setting. Much of the new development, which extends to the southeast and southwest of the campus center, is connected via a series of pedestrian corridors highlighted in yellow. Despite the size of our campus, the goal is to create interconnectivity among the various campus districts. The Agricultural District is preserved for the continuation of this important teaching and research asset that uniquely defines the campus. New facilities to support ag bio research activity are in areas that are already developed so that the valuable farmland remains intact. A series of strategies are proposed to enhance ecological connectivity, wherein we can study how agriculture can provide both high yields and environmental outcomes that benefit society. The area around Farm Lane and Shaw Lane becomes a new heart for the campus. Adjacent to the new multicultural center, this area that is currently surface parking lots will transform into a lively plaza for use on both an everyday basis and for special events. It can be programmed throughout the year with special consideration for seasonal activities. Landscape improvements and specialized paving help reinforce that this is a pedestrian priority zone and traffic is directed so as not to detract from the pedestrian experience. Parking is shifted slightly outside of this core area, but still within convenient proximity of district destinations. Red Cedar Road is transformed into a new pedestrian and transit promenade. Everyday traffic is shifted westward to allow for this transformation, which will provide greater connectivity between the existing facilities and the space designated for new teaching and research. The design of the space can include dynamic and programmable outdoor areas that extends the learning and research occurring within adjacent facilities outdoors. The South Academic District provides nearly 6 million gross square feet of capacity for the expansion of academic research and partnership growth along Hagedorn Road. New development sites frame a spine of open space that connects the precinct to an expansion of Baker Woodlot, ensuring that future generations of students and faculty have access to unique resources that support teaching, learning, research, and personal well-being. A similar organizational strategy is proposed for the redevelopment of Spartan Village. This short video provides a glimpse of what is possible. We begin by circling around the center of campus as it exists today. Areas of strategic change in the center of campus are highlighted with the darker boundaries. We see the center of campus today defined by large surface parking lots and vehicular circulation systems.
Looking to the future, we start by moving north along the Red Cedar Promenade, made possible by street closures that seek to enhance the pedestrian realm, expand economic opportunities, and support well-being. The promenade serves as an extension of the classroom with areas for teaching and research as well as exercise and relaxation. New development to the left replaces UPLA and the former water reservoir with collaborative teaching and research facilities adjacent to engineering and STEM. The Red Cedar Promenade crosses Shaw Lane and intersects with the proposed non-motorized corridor that was once North Shaw Lane. The one-way pair is eliminated by converting South Shaw Lane to a two-way road. New academic and research facilities occupy what was once large surface parking lots. Buildings are interconnected, further expanding the pedestrian realm, providing collaborative amenities and mitigating Michigan's winter climate. A new community space is provide, uh, provides a programmable activity center in the heart of campus that can be used for a variety of events from participation to tailgating. A vibrant centerpiece wherein engagement, collaboration, well-being, and community are supported. Thank you for your interest in the university facility and land use plan.